and uh, become incompatible with the dominant function and send up energy surges into consciousness, uh, which can send up energy surges which can produce ecstasies and visions in consciousness and can lead to neuroses. We are all combinations of the two types and of the four basic functions, and our mental health or psychology uh, emerges from a struggle between opposites. The goal of Jungian psychology is to retrieve and develop inferior functions. Now, Pauli strongly identified with many of Jung's insights, and as you can see in his books, uh, uh, Pauli's books, uh, even his physics books, they're amazing. They, they just crack right open. Uh, he just read it once, that was it. Uh, but passages that he considered as important, he would line with, he would mark with three vertical pencil lines. And so consider a passage uh, in which, consider the following passage marked with three lines. Where the persona is intellectual, the soul is quite certainly sentimental. A very feminine woman has a masculine soul and a very manly man a feminine soul. This opposition is based upon the fact that a man, for instance, is not in all things wholly masculine, but also has certain feminine traits. Pauli was wondering where his feminine trait or anima was. Perhaps Jung could, Jung, Jung could locate it for him. I'd like to point another passage out to you that, uh, once again, uh, marked with three vertical pencil lines, which when Pauli saw it, he probably fell off his chair saying, this is me. His judgment appears cold, obstinate, arbitrary, and inconsiderate. Only with difficulty can he persuade himself to admit that what is clear to him may not be equally clear to everyone. His is an exacting scrupulousness. His work goes slowly and with difficulty. Either he is taciturn or he falls among people who cannot understand him, whereupon he proceeds to gather further proof of the unfathomable stupidity of man. Or he may develop into a misanthropic bachelor with a childlike heart. He appears prickly, inaccessible, haughty. He has little influence as a personal teacher, since the mentality of his pupils uh, is strange to him. He is a poor teacher. He has a vague dread of the other sex. Well, with all that under his belt, uh, Pauli went to see Jung in his fortress-like house in Kuznach, and we're just outside of Zurich, and Jung sized him up immediately. What he saw before him was a young man of excellent scientific education, but a very one-sided intellectual, a hard-boiled rationalist who did his best to evade his emotional needs as the waste of time since they had nothing to do with science. Pauli poured out his troubles to Jung. He felt he was at, he was at the end. He, he, he couldn't go on any longer. Uh, he was in a panic, as he put it, over his amazing dreams and visions. He felt he was about to lose his reason. When he entered my house, Jung recalled, I myself felt the wind blowing over from the lunatic asylum. After an interval, after Pauli met Jung, uh, he took up face-to-face -face analysis with Jung. Uh, in that interval, he had dreamed 355 dreams and wrote them up. Uh, the analysis lasted from about uh, January 1933 to April 1934. During that time, Pauli dreamt another 45 dreams Jung was ecstatic. They contained the most marvelous series of archetypal images, Jung said, in one of the many lectures he gave on Pauli's dreams. Now, Pauli insisted that Jung never use his name. Um, Jung always spoke about the young intellectual, young, brilliant intellectual scientist who was his uh, patient, because Pauli was afraid that his uh, reputation would be ruined. After all, at this time, Jung's reputation in some quarters is rather dodgy owing to his folding in of, uh, of alchemy into his, into his analysis. Of the 400 dreams, Jung lectured on uh, 59 of them because they exemplified uh, what Jung called the process of individuation. It's the centering of the personality between the conscious and the unconscious. The conscious and the unconscious balance off each other. They're mirror images of each other so that the self can be in between, and this is the highest level of enlightenment in Jung that uh, it, it's signaled by the appearance of symbols such as the anima in men as well as the mandala. Now, Jung's method of analytic psychology uh, concerns his identifying images in his patient's dreams with images from alchemy, myth, and religion, enabling him to seek out archetypes. He conceived of this as a dialectical discussion between in, in individuals consciousness, conscious and unconscious, uh, so that eventually the individual can meet 
his or her dark side and separate it uh, from, for example, from his, from his, the dreamer's anima. This is Jung's um, uh, analysis room as it, uh, is it possible to lower the lights up front a bit? I guess not. Okay, this is his analysis room, and as it exists today, uh, the patient either side here with a nice view of uh, Lake Zurich, or over here where the patient could, uh, could see Jung's uh, uh, amazing collection of ancient alchemical texts. Jung sat in the middle on a couch, and the, pi the, chi the table was piled high with papers and books, and so was the floor with research papers and books. It was a highly intellectual uh, uh, analysis room. There was a smaller analysis room next door, which Jung used to write letters and to analyze patients that he wasn't that interested in. But in this room, as Jung put it, uh, during his discussion, he could, he could have an out-of-body experience. He could be on the walls. He could be on the ceiling. He could be everywhere. Let's take a look at uh, Jung's analysis of, of certain of Pauli's dreams. <clears throat> Pauli Trampley is surrounded by a group of vague female forms, and he hear a voice within him say, first I must get away from father, and Jung tells him, well, that sentence should be completed by, in order to follow the unconscious, which is those seductive female forms. And Jung shows Pauli um, a, an image from an ancient al alchemical book the, the three maidens are the unconscious, and standing next to them is a figure uh, called, with the ancient Hellenic name of Hermes. Um, Hermes is, uh, is the ancient Hellenic name for the central figure in alchemy, Mercurius, uh, which in alchemy is an intermediary between the, between the worlds of lightness and darkness. In Jung's version of alchemy, Mercurius is an intermediator between the conscious and the unconscious. He's called a psychopomp. The father is not Pauli's real father, but it represents the traditional masculine world of intellectualism as opposed to the unconscious, which is, which is feminine. The dreamer feels as if acknowledging the unconscious, he will slight his rationalism. Now the figures in the Pauli's dreams are feminine, Jung says, is not unusual because in alchemy, females play the role of trying to seduce the unwary traveler away from his uh, journey, and in Pauli's case, away from seeking his unconscious. But Pauli wants to press on. Uh, the problem is, is how to do this. He dreams that he's rooted in the center of a circle made by a serpent who bites his own tail the way an artist colleague has depicted it. And Jung shows Pauli another page from an ancient alchemical text. This is the serpent who bites his own tail, Euroboros. Euroboros is often the symbol for Mercurius in the, early, in the early stages of the alchemical process of purification. The circle symbolizes the circular nature of the transformative process in which the four elements, earth, water, air, and fire, are transformed one into the other. The circle, uh, also demarcates off a sacred protected area called the Taminos in alchemy. For Jung, the sacred protected area is the space in which the dreamer can meet his unconscious. Pali dreams of a veiled woman who appears for the first time. Uh, Jung tells her, he tells him her technical name is Anima. And that a figure appears and not a symbol means that autonomous activity is brewing in Pauli's unconscious. Something is about to happen. Pauli is about to be able to leave on his journey to meet the unconscious with a lot of terrifying circumstances occurring, including him coming up against irrationality, something which he can't, he can't imagine uh, confronting. Jung shows Pauli a William Blake painting of uh, unknown veiled female figures lining a staircase uh, uh, marking out the ascent of the soul through the seven orbs of the planets back to where it originated in, 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 the, in the sun god. In Jung's psychology, the soul contains all those general human qualities that the conscious attitude lacks, and, and this symbolizes the beginning of Pauli's transformation into a new person. Pauli is fired up, wants to plunge into the sea of the unconscious. His dreams shift to his interactions with 
three others, one of whom he ignored.